Jiu-Jitsu in Street Fights Volume 1. Why is it Volume 1? Gives us an excuse to do more volume. Because there's going to be Volume 2 through 200. It's going to keep going. Why? It's happening. The world is learning. The fights are happening. People are sending us the videos. Yeah, the fights have probably been happening. What's happening now is that everybody has their phone ready to capture anything. Well, the Jiu-Jitsu in the fights has also been a more recent thing as okay, well. Okay, but yes. still, it's been happening for a while. No, I've we don't care about Yeah, it's true. It's true. People have been fighting the streets for a long time using Jiu-Jitsu. And it's very, it's, it's amazing to watch a street fight between two untrained people and how uncontrolled and chaotic and clumsy the movements are. As soon as someone in there knows jujitsu, how controlled, strategic the techniques become, most of the time successfully, sometimes unsuccessfully. We want to break some of those down today and show you guys what we took from them. Wait, partners! Fight simulation class here at the Gracie Academy every way. If you're not including punches in your training, you're not training Gracie Jiu Jitsu. But the point is, um, fighting someone, imagine being a bad guy and getting into a street fight and expecting to fight another clumsy brawler, throwing fists, losing their balance, and you end up fighting someone who knows jujitsu and they begin moving in snake-like fashion. Managing the distance. How does that just, feel to you? I, I, nothing more frustrating than somebody who's behaving just that <laughs> out of the ordinary. Right. It's almost like you're fighting against an alien because the movements are alien to you and you have a choice. Either become one of us, become an alien, or be a... Let's go. <laughs> so what's the breakdown? <laughs> so here's the deal. There was an incident on a train here in Southern California where it kind of went viral a couple weeks ago where a guy was acting crazy, like threatening passengers and getting all out of control. And he was just like, your shirt off, grabbing people, pushing, and like just about to threaten and attack people. He got in one guy's face, and then suddenly, the Viking, as they call him on this train. Wait, and the, this is a few people who were kind of around by him, yes. Standing up, holding this bike in the way. Bike. And then this person, comes, the Viking comes out of nowhere. The Viking comes out of nowhere. That was the best nowhere. part. The Viking was just sitting down so reading, reading the, the newspaper. Guy. He comes up, you see him talking to someone over here, and suddenly the Viking comes like this, boom. And he grabs him, he grabs him, and he grabs him. He drops him all unconscious. Oh. Damn. 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 This is going viral. Viking went modified gable grip, but he did it even deeper with his wrist. The bottom line is he had done that before, and he knew how to control the situation, put the person unconscious, and even though his rear naked choke application was not fully locked in, it was more of a gable grip finish from here. The guy went unconscious, and then when the guy woke up, the Viking was actually standing on him like this. Very Viking-like. <laughs> it was very good. So the bottom line is, he knew what he was capable of. He came into the situation. The Viking was much stronger than the guy, so he was very capable of handling it in a non-violent way, which and, was very cool. And I, I would appreciate that. Dude, he if, saved the if, train. If that was my son yes. that was out of control, I'd appreciate this versus the Viking punching him and knocking yes. him out. Jiu-Jitsu saved the freaking punk kid on the train this time. Most, he might have been on drugs or some sort. Most peaceful Viking Let's ever. Let's show them the method. If the, if, the, it was, if the roles were reversed, if it was the skinny guy trying to choke the Viking because the Viking was out of control, how would you do it on the Viking? First Check it out. I would just walk away. Yeah, good idea. Okay. But assuming you had to apprehend the Viking who was getting out of control, you come up from behind, watch, standing knee buckle, double shoulder grab, slam him to your chest. Once you bring him, you insert. You catch here or you sink it in. Right and you now. can drop all the way down to here. Boom. And then you can choke. And if it's an arrest and control situation, say hands behind your back, sir. Hands behind your back. Hands behind your back. And then you roll them over, boom, and you come into a handcuffing procedure from here. But that's beyond civilian use, okay? So don't more, show them. Oh yeah, my bad, I shouldn't have shown them. But more importantly, the point is a standing rear knee kebab. So you kick the knee, pull the shoulders, line it up. That's a good technique. And that's if he's a little taller, it gets him down to your level. Yes. And even if they're not taller, there's advantage to knocking them off balance because then they can't stand again. The Viking did that, which is kind of the pull. Well, correct, but somebody who is similar size, right. it's possible that you might wrap my neck and I go like this. Yeah, that's not good. And lift you up. So the idea of collapsing somebody's body, Critical. whether it's with the little pull or with the kick, keeps them off balance, keeps you stronger. And the knee buckle, right? They just kind of, they bend and now try to stand back up. I can't because my knee is here and I can control them all the way to the descent. Congratulations to the Viking and the rest of the crew on that train there. You guys handled him perfectly to his benefit. Street fight number two, Jiu Jitsu use, was in Russia. It sounded like. Now, my, my, my Eastern European or my European he has accent, no idea where it was. Uh, uh, language uh, deciphering capabilities are limited, even though we have some Russian CTCs. My family, what's up out there? The moral of the story is um, the fight started the fight, on the ground. We, we only see it on the ground, so he's in the bottom of the guard, and there's a lot of punching going on. What do you remember? The boom. He's hitting, I remember. he's walking. He did a good job keeping the posture down, right? Yeah, the angle was from behind, so you, you couldn't see that well. What was the first indicator that you knew Jiu Jitsu was down here? The legs constantly climbing up, and the, sometimes it isn't about holding tight, but it's about like arching away. Like, go staying away. Right. So I noticed 
connection and legs crossed, but this, this, this stretch. Yeah, there was this, this very deliberate use of the legs. We knew this guy knew something. We don't know where he trains or what he does, but a lot of guard. What else did you say? Legs, legs. high leg right here, like holding like the um. Yes. Yeah, he grabbing his leg a little bit, mm -hmm. holding it over. He was just doing a good job keeping the posture down. Eventually, they were here, he pulled his hand back. This knee kind of came in, and it became a little bit of a scramble for this foot to come through. It got stuck, and then he just yeah. shot it through. Boom, and he got to here, and then his leg kind of locked in. This hand did not get pulled across because he didn't need to. Just even right now, like as a distance management, raise your hips up. This is the best. Freeze, let go of my hands, just hips up. Like this is not, I don't have the best reach from here. Right, because it's very good control. And there was a good amount of this. So from here, he reaches in, you see him do this. And that was nice. A little a cinching adjustment right here. Now, of course, generally speaking, the world learns triangles as redirect his arm, shove it across, and get it over here. And that's necessary when you're against a 300 pound neck right here. So in that case, you do this to make the guy narrower, which makes him an easier lockable target. But in this Street Fight's case right now, the guy was not much bigger. They were very much the same size. So in that case, there's absolutely no need. Now, the way we would have taught it is uncross, throw the leg over your ankle, hold it, and then reconfirm. And now, even with just my legs right now, he don't going to sleep, okay, 100%. Now the guy did not pass out. He locked it up here pretty tight, and then he started hitting him. Oh, well, it was a very emotional fight. You could tell we don't know what the backstory was. Hitting, 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 but you couldn't hit back. He was limited in his reach. But he was also blocking the punches. But it's very easy to forget that you're on the bottom and that I can still do damage here. Right. Yes. So I felt a certain respect from the bottom person, which was really nice. Boom! He was hitting him. Boom! Yeah. Was, finally, they fell over to the side like this. Fall over. Boom! And then they kind of, he kind of let him go. He was talking to him a little bit, let him go, got up. And I think he even kicked him or hit him after, right? When he got up. So, moral of the story was, we're not endorsing street fights, are we? No, we're endorsing self-defense. We're endorsing self-defense. We're endorsing the knowledge. Know the information. So when it happens to you, for different circumstances of your own, in a totally self-defense appropriate situation, you know what to do. The third situation. Interesting situation. A bigger guy, a skinnier guy. The skinny guy shot in. The skinny guy, I, I don't know who started the fight, this, but the end This was an example of when the jiu-jitsu did not prevail. Well, and uh, we don't even know if he trains jiu-jitsu, but he did some jiu-jitsu movements. And it's just good to point out what went wrong and why it went wrong, and you guys can benefit from And that. you just said it didn't prevail, but to some degree it did. Yeah, I mean, it didn't prevail because prevailing is in the end. Yeah, when you're losing the fight. But yeah. there's still many moments of victory for this smaller jiu-jitsu guy. So he just shot in, boom, he missed the punch, like a punch, and then he clinched him, and then he head this way. And he ran away outside, Trip, we fell together. Boom, oh, he mounted, he came on top. Boom, right when he did, this guy rolled this way, he rolled with the headlock, and he ended up almost getting up. But then the headlock slipped out. Boom. Which is amazing that you didn't fall off that way. Correct. And then he locked the it was body. Very impressive, but he only had one hook, and so he fell like this. Here. Cross your feet. He crossed his feet behind, so it's kind of a modified back mount situation. Um, it wasn't a round. No, that's one of the whole point. He missed the hook. He's attacking the neck right here. The guy was defending, but then this is the problem of not having the top hook. Anytime you don't have the top hook, the hip is free to get up. Yeah. So the only time you're allowed to have modified back mount is if your hand is under my armpit and your shoulder control exists. Because if you own the shoulder, I cannot pronate. So if you don't have a top hook, you better have a top arm control. Because even if you don't get the tight choke right now, my mm. shoulder's gonna slip out and I'm gonna face him. And that's what happened. So in this case, he came up, boom. Now, the big guy here is on top of the guard. Smaller guy's on the bottom. He puts guard, put guard. He hits him a couple times, he stands up. Boom, boom. And then he ends up like walking around and kicking him in the head. Boom. Yeah, you could tell that the legs of the bottom person, the smaller guy, there, there was no life boom. to them. Boom. There was no connection, no distance management at all. So it seemed like he had grappled before, a couple chokes, back takes, comfortable in the grappling flow, but there was no distance management from here. And, and the man on top, he, it's not like he was throwing his weight forward. Yeah, he was just to give the legs anything to anchor on. So to some degree, you have to do a fair amount of kicking. Right. Right? Like, yes. bow, bow. And at least not let me get an angle on your head. Yes. You see, that was the case. He stepped around and he kicked him. Let go. He stepped around and boom, he kicked him in the head. So yeah. you can, there can be no chance that my foot touches your head in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. I'm going to kick your knee to coach I know. That's why I'm not coming close. Yeah. I know. I know. I trust know. me. Yeah, trust me. I know. I know. So when this is the situation, my only choice is to overcommit. And if I overcommit for the punch, he goes to my hips. Mm. Boom. And there's nothing there. And then he, of course, can drop me back in. Let me back in and continue the fight from down here. So it's just clear that that might have been the first time that that young man had ever had someone standing over in his guard trying to punch his face in. So what's the bottom line? Better to know jujitsu than know jujitsu. Oh better, my goodness. But better to know that jujitsu. No, no, they already got it. Don't they? Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Got better it, got to know jujitsu than to know jujitsu. Put it this way if the first time your jujitsu needs to work against strikes is when it actually matters, 
not start fighting. Say, finish the sentence, man. Come on, man. <laughs> there is no finish to that sentence. You guys finish that sentence. Listen. All right. Fortunately, he's just a young kid, and he can have lots of time for, uh, ahead of himself to keep training and get a black belt. And Jiu-Jitsu, you guys. Jiu-Jitsu in Street Fights, Volume 1. There are more fights to break down. Send us your favorite ones. We'll talk about them, success or failure. We learn from them all. All right, much respect. We'll see you guys soon. Hito has some of coming up in New York. Where are you going? I'm going to Rochester, New York. I'm going to be in Manchester, New Hampshire, and Queensville, New York. Listen, I'll, don't go to start fights. They're going to want to start no, no, no. fights. If you send us a fight, that, if you them. send us a fight that you're in, you're not going to know. Doing Jiu-Jitsu, we will not break it down. Because you instigated it. Unless you didn't instigate it and you can prove it to us, then we might break it down. Oh, and I'm going to England. I'm going to Tampa, you guys. Tampa, Florida. I'll see you guys next weekend. Leoto's Friday on Saturday. I'm doing a seminar on Friday night at the Certified Training Center in Tampa. Everything, more details, Korea, Japan, everything, everything. GracieAcademy.com slash seminars. Thanks for joining us. Bye! <laughs> so even if you're the most peaceful person in the world and you would never pick a fight, it doesn't even matter because sometimes the fight picks you. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu exists as both a recreational sport and a proven self-defense system. Unfortunately, most Jiu Jitsu academies only focus on the sport of aspect. Gracie Combatives is 100% dedicated to street self-defense. Knowing these techniques, principles, and philosophies of Gracie Combatives allows you to de-escalate the situation and avoid the avoidable fights. It's not in our nature to hurt fellow human beings. We want to defend ourselves and go home safe to our families. But at the same time, this person that's attacking us, I don't want to have to rely on eye gouging them and breaking their nose to defend myself. I want to use good technique, and once I gain compliance and they stop fighting me, I can get up and walk away and the fight is over. It's self-defense, not self-offense. Even though jujitsu as an art consists of over 600 techniques from white to black belt, studies have shown that only a few dozen techniques were used time and time again to defeat every challenger. And this revelation gave birth to the Gracie Combatives program. Originally, this program was created exclusively for the US Army, but since then we've made so many modifications and we've opened it up to the general public so that anyone can learn from anywhere in the world. The self-defense is at the top of my priorities while being here. It's the mindset, the confidence. Every single day we train our beginner students the Gracie Combatives program, which gets them ready for street self-defense. But the crazy part is that this also works at the highest level. In my last fight, I was up against UFC vet Tiago Tavares. For three rounds, I managed the distance, I managed the damage, I happened to use 34 combative techniques, which ultimately led me to win the fight. So even though these are the most basic techniques that we teach, they're also the most effective out on the street and in the octagon. Between 1989 and 2006, we discovered that most people who quit jujitsu do so in the first six months as a result of injury or discouragement. And that's when we introduced the Gracie Combatives program on the civilian level and completely changed the beginner learning experience. When you walk into this building, you're gonna receive a welcome off the mat and on the mat. You're gonna feel this sense of gentility from your training partners, where they are here to help you and you are there to help them. It's a teamwork, it's a collaboration between two people to learn an art that will help us throughout the rest of our lives, but learn it at this pace that allows us to train every day and train for years and years and for the rest of our lives. I like that um, we're all in the same boat, we're, we're growing together and we're all at this foundation building stage. Just because we're learning how to fight doesn't mean we need to fight each other to learn. Even though the techniques and the principles of the Gracie Combatives program are 100% applicable at the highest level of mixed martial arts competition, we're very well aware that 99.9999% of the people who walk through our doors have absolutely zero aspiration to fight professionally. 
The most important thing for any new student to know is that the threat is not on the mat, it's out in the street. I've been wanting to do jujitsu for a long time. First time I stepped into a school, it's pretty much you fall right into class. You start sparring immediately. And I'm like, well, okay, what's going on? There's like, just don't tap. Immediately I have a guy pretty much jumping on me. So anyway, it gets me in my ankle and it does it so fast that my ankle is ends up hurting, I'm limping. This is my first day. I kept going for maybe a week and a half, maybe two weeks to that school, but I just got discouraged and I left. I didn't sign up to get beat up, you know what I mean? Came to learn. There's a fear to go into a gym that I'm gonna be shark bait. When I, when I got here, first day, I felt embraced and I felt comfortable and I also felt that the environment, the culture here was to teach, it was safety and it was almost to bring you into a family. Besides the street applicability of the techniques, what really sets the Gracie Combative system apart is the program structure and the curriculum design. Every single student at every certified training center around the world has the exact same Gracie Combatives attendance tracking card on which we track every single class that they complete. So at any given time, a student knows exactly how far they've come and exactly what's left to accomplish before completing the program and moving on to the next level. So every student that comes into the academy has their own card with all of the lessons on it. Um, you know exactly the order of the lessons, what combination, which one's standing, which one's ground, and then every month there's a calendar that tells exactly which lesson's going to be taught on what day. Since we've certified every single school around the world to teach this program exactly the same, if you travel on vacation and you visit another certified training center, any classes you complete remotely will be credited to your card when you get home. And what's really cool is that every student at every CTC around the world is granted free online access to GracieUniversity.com. The Gracie Online University gives you that opportunity to do your best, put forth you know, extra effort, and just really study whatever the class you're doing that day. I'll usually watch the video once or twice before coming in. What the structured lessons do for me is I know what's happening in the class. I can watch it on Gracie University ahead of time before I come into class. I can practice, I can rewind, I can go over stuff, but in an unfamiliar environment, having that degree of predictability strips away all of the insecurity. The bottom line is we've done all the planning. The curriculum is amazing, the instructors are unbelievable, and the system just works. Structure, safety, street readiness. If you simply show up to class and you commit yourself, it's impossible not to learn what the Gracie Combatives program has to offer you. We'll see you on the mat.